Hey guys and welcome back to another Android TV box comparison video and for those of you that don't want to wait till the end of the video uh, spoiler alert if you want to choose one of these then the Z69 Max is superior than the Tanix TX9 for those of you that want to find out why then let's go for it <laughs> And we are back. So starting as always with the package contents, as you guys may see by the images, both of them share the same accessories and so on and so forth. In terms of specifications, these two machines have the same AM Logic S912, 3 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of flash storage running Android 7.1.2. Now in terms of build quality guys, these two machines are very similar, but the Z69 Max, as in my opinion, are better build quality. Nothing special, but it is slightly better than the Tanix TX9, which is really <laughs> made of this cheapo plastic. And although the Z69 is not a premium plastic, uh, it's better than the TX9 uh, in terms of build quality at least. And even the design, I prefer the simpler design of the Z69. Nine. Now moving on to the connectivity, as you guys can see by the images, both of them share the same uh, ports and connectivity. The only difference is that the Z69 Max has a optical output while the TX9 doesn't. And in terms of remote controls, they share uh, more or less the same kind of remote, which is very usual in this kind of box. Infrared remote control, which for the lack of a better word, both of them are crappy, so my advice is always to get a wireless remote so that you guys can have a better experience. And as always, I will leave a link down below for a video comparison that I did a while back with wireless remote so that you can have a better idea the kind of experience that you can have with a proper remote instead of one of these. Now moving on to the launcher, as you guys can see by the images, the TX9 Pro, at least in my opinion, is a little bit refreshing. Uh, it's nothing special, but for what we used to see, which is a copy paste in terms of launchers, nonetheless, we can install any launcher and have a completely different interface. Now, moving on to some benchmarks, guys, as you can see on the images, starting with the resolution, which both of them will display at 4K 30 Hertz, then the DRM test, CPU-Z just for curiosity, root check, which both of them have root enabled, and then the disk speed with the TX9 having a quite a good result, 117 megabytes per second on the reads, which is not bad at all. And then in terms of network on Wi-Fi, both of them were very disappointing. On the 30 megabits per second on download, which is nothing at all. And then on the Ethernet, much better. The Z69 getting the maximum of my connection, but the TX9 only getting half. Then we have Geekbench, Anton 2 and 3D Mark score just for a small comparison. Now moving on to the real world performance, which is what matters here. Starting with Netflix, as you guys are aware, both of these will play only SD quality of 480p. The YouTube TV app will go up to 1080 resolution. And honestly, I didn't find any stutter or any issues while playing YouTube. Everything seemed uh, smooth. On the mobile app, the same situation happened. 1080 maximum resolution video was smooth so all okay next test was my iptv uh, provided from my isp and both of these machines played just fine and then the troubles started with kodi now in terms of the z69 max actually not bad at all in terms of kodi uh, using 17.6 all my tests passed h265 h264 8-bit and 10-bit videos up to 4k played everything smoothly without any issues on the other hand the tx9 was just a complete mess and hopefully you guys can see on the screen that we will have all sorts of problems especially on the 4k videos 10-bit uh, it will stutter a lot and it's not a smooth playback, very annoying to watch. And we also have sounds out of sync, some image glitches, some of them really ugly. Uh, and hopefully you can see on the screen. I also tested out uh, what they have installed, which is TV Center. It's basically a Kodi fork based on Kodi 17.4. And I was hoping that it was optimized for this machine, but unfortunately we have the same issue. So what I can say in terms of these two, that the TX9 is not a machine made for Kodi or video playback 
with Kodi, uh, while the Z69 Max can actually play back everything that I had right over here. Now moving on to Plex, the Z69 Max uh, was able to play everything, while the TX9 uh, did not play anything at all, because I could not install Plex app and the reason for this is one of the firmware issues that this machine has which is it will not allow us to install some apps. Plex was one of, of them, Skype was another one, Google Play Games was another one. So as you can see uh, there will be some apps that will not work. Just making a pause right over here, this was the biggest issue that I found on the Tenix TX9 Pro, which is some of the apps will not be able to install. And those that I mentioned, Plex, Google Play Games, Skype, for example, uh, are only a few of the ones that I've used. So it's probably that some users will uh, use this machine with other apps and they will face this issue. It will give us a error saying that our network is not available when clearly it's available to install some apps. So this is honestly the first time that I see this error in one of these machines. It's a firmware situation. I don't know if it's going to be fixed and if it does, when it's going to be fixed. So have this in mind. Now moving on to Skype, the Tanix TX9 Pro once again was not able to install that app. On the other hand, the Z69 Max was able to install the app and it's able to use my USB camera, but it's not able to use the camera in Skype. So it's useless if you want to use Skype and a webcam. And then lastly, on the AirPlay, I was able to play on the TX9 without any issues. Both video and audio was okay. On the Z69 Max, on the other hand, delays and video stutters, which are not very nice. Hopefully you can see that the image seems to stop and then it goes a little bit faster just because of those delays and video stutters. And then moving on to gaming on the Android side of things, the TX9 was once again a real mess because some of the games I could not install because of the error that we have seen in the past and some of the games that I could install required Google Play games to synchronize and I couldn't synchronize. On the other hand, the Z69 Max, as you can see, first game that I did test out was Asphalt Extreme, which was very slow, frames per second right over there. I couldn't measure, but if it was about 10 frames per second, <laughs> it was a real, real sluggish to play. Uh, Responables, which is one of my favorite games and I used to test on all machines, could not install at all. Finally, Asphalt 8 played without any issues on the Z69, so not bad at all, but far from being perfect. And I was about to give up on this too, but one more test, which was the game streaming. And as you can see, surprisingly, it works fine on both of them. I was using the uh, 1080 60 frames per second preset, and as you guys can see, respectable results. I didn't feel any lags, any delays whatsoever. Both machines did work just fine. I did start with Gas Guzzlers, which is a game that we enjoy a lot. And then moving on to Rocket League, both of these machines worked flawlessly. Uh, and Rocket League, as you guys know, it's an online game. So we are using bandwidth forth and backwards. So all good right over here in terms of game streaming. So in conclusion guys, what I can say is that none of these is perfect and if you are trying to find a budget box just for a particular uh, situation, let's say Kodi or GameStream or whatever, then you can just go back and see and compare what's wrong with one and what's wrong with the other because there are pros and cons on both of them. But if I had to make a choice today on the machine that I would choose from these two, definitely the Z69 Max would be my option because for the kind of usage that I give to the box, this one was the one that gave me the best results. And that is it. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.